Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Tin Men by Christopher Golden. This is from Ballantine Books and came out earlier this year. I was finally able to get my hands on a copy and read it. I'm a big Christopher Golden fan. Uh, and what you've got here with this book is uh, in the near future, or at least the not-too-distant future. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is between those two things. Uh, but in the, in the near future, um, the world is suffering from economic collapse and environmental disasters. Uh, sea levels have risen so much that uh, it's literally changed the landscape. Uh, the shapes of certain countries, uh, the outlines have changed just because of the rising water levels. Um, so the world's just in chaos, and the United States decides to step in, and they have this new thing called the Remote Infantry Corps, also known as the Tin Men. And these are uh, remote-controlled robots, and the United States sends the sends the the Tin Man into hot spots all around the world. Basically, if people are causing trouble, the Tin Man come in and slap them down. And uh, a few people appreciate it, I guess, but there are a lot of people that really are not happy with uh, the United States stepping in or they haven't been invited. Uh, they have been invited to a few places, but they, they'll go wherever they feel they're needed. Um, so this is the state of the world at the beginning of the book and uh, so we're following the main character essentially is Danny Kelso he's one of these remote tin men pilots and he and the rest of the first remote infantry infantry division excuse me are on patrol in Syria when a group of terrorists slash anarchists set off an electromagnetic pulse, uh, which cuts off the Tin Men from their home base. Uh, communications cut off, of course, an electromagnetic pulse destroys basically any electronic device, throwing everything into even more chaos. But now the consciousness of the soldiers are trapped inside their robot bodies and of course without any outside communication they don't know what's going on in the rest of the world so this particular group of tin men that we're following um, they have to decide what they're going to do uh, first they're trying to get to the the embassy and then one of them realizes that uh, there's a summit in Athens and the president is there and if this isn't just a localized attack, if it's worldwide, then that most likely means to, to them, to the Tin Men, that uh, the president's life is in danger. So there's some division among the group. Should they just stick in Syria and get to the embassy and await orders? Or do they go and try to save the president if he happens to be in danger? So all these factors, and that's the main crux of the story. Um, and what a fantastic story it is. I'm a big fan of Christopher Golden. This, as a reader, this is a bit of a departure for me. I'm mostly familiar with his horror. I know he's done some other things, urban fantasy and, uh, and such, which I've read some of. Um, I can't say definitively that this is his first step into more straight ahead science fiction-y kind of stuff, but as a reader, it's definitely different than than the other stuff I've read, the Darkness Saga, which is his vampire saga, and his a lot of his straight up horror stuff. Um, but definitely, I mean, a good writer is a good writer, and uh, this is definitely a fantastic book. Uh, it's got great characters, as I, I mentioned, uh, Danny Kelso, um, who's just a private first class. He's a grunt. And, uh, you know, we get to know him, a lot of backstory for him. Uh, we've got Kate Wade, who is another one of the, uh, the Tin Men, uh, and another great, interesting character. Very take-charge kind of gal. 
Uh, but she's another great character, a lot of backstory, and uh, her father happens to be advi an advisor for the president, and he is in Athens with the president, so Kate's got a personal stake in, uh, in getting to Athens and saving the president and hopefully saving her father's life. Um, so, and all the Tin Men are interesting. They've all got distinct personalities and everything. I'm not going to name them all. I didn't put them all down in my notes, and I don't remember everybody's name. But you've got the young kid who's kind of obnoxious and the older soldier uh, who's also kind of obnoxious. Um, and uh, just, again, all sorts of different personalities within this particular group of Tin Men. Um, now, the actual physical bodies of the soldiers are in a place they call the Hump. Uh, and it's in Germany. It's, it's this huge underground complex. And uh, the soldiers are on eight-hour shifts. So when Danny Kelso and Kate Wade and everybody else, when it's time for their shift, uh, they go down into the hump and they're attached to all this stuff and they go in these pods that will keep their bodies safe and nourished and everything. And their consciousness goes to these remote control robots anywhere in the world. In this particular case, it's Syria. And it's like they're in the robots. They control them and everything. And then when their shift is over, basically after eight hours, they're brought back and a new, a new group of soldiers goes into the pods and takes over for them. Uh, so basically, for every uh, Tin Man, there's three people, three different people controlling it at different times. So... Uh, a lot of them decorate their tin men sort of like the old World War II planes. As a matter of fact, one of the one of the soldiers actually has an old old fashioned World War II kind of painting on his tin man with a you know a buxom babe riding a bomb or something. I can't remember what she's actually on, but if you're familiar with that old World War II nose art, you know what I'm talking about. And uh when uh, on this particular day when Danny Kelso shows up in his Tin Man, he finds out that or discovers that one of the other soldiers that uses the same robot uh, has painted a target on the chest. You know, just to be funny, but eh, it's not so funny when you're out there in the middle of a war zone. Um, so uh, Danny and Kate and everybody, they're just doing their job in Syria not knowing that there's this huge plot with the terrorists and the anarchists. And uh, we do kind of follow one of the terrorists slash anarchists. Crap. I can't, I, Khalid Khan, I think, was his name. I didn't write it down. I should have. Uh, but he has a personal stake in this. Um, he hates both Kate and Danny and wants them dead. And these the Tin Men are pretty solid construction. Um, you know, they're, of course, faster and stronger than a normal person, uh, full of ammo and weapons and stuff, and pretty tough. Uh, but now there's there are these new robot killer uh, rocket launchers that the terrorists are using. I'm not going to keep saying terrorist slash anarchist. If I just say terrorist, I mean both. I'm talking about the whole group here. <laughs> so uh, they have these new rocket killer, or robot killer rockets that'll blow up a freaking Tin Man, blow it into pieces. And normally, if that happens, the soldier's consciousness just goes back to his body. But now with this EMP and their consciousness being trapped inside, uh, one of the big questions is what happens? They, they don't have that link. Normally they're linked by satellites, but everything's been wiped out by the electromagnetic pulse. What happens if your Tin Man body is is blown up when your consciousness is trapped inside. So that's an issue that they have to deal with, which of course really does a lot of, really plays with the minds of, of the soldiers. Um, so you've got the, the terrorists, you've got Khan, uh, and then one of the things I really like about this story is that it really stays focused. Uh, there's basically three different things going on. We follow uh, the 1st Remote Infant Infantry Division, 
Danny and Kate and everybody. Um, and then on occasion, we will jump to the embassy in Syria. Because um, one of the characters, one of our main characters is the daughter of the ambassador uh, from the United States. And so we get to see things, what's going on with her. And then it will jump to Athens and the president and his advisor, and we see what's going on with them. And of course, it'll all tie together. But I like that it stays focused on this and doesn't show us at all what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, the Tin Men don't even know if this is a localized attack or if this electromagnetic pulse has basically thrown the entire world back to the Stone Age. Um, but I like that it's focused. We don't really need to see what's going on in the rest of the world. We want to follow these characters. These are the characters you're going to come to know and love. And they are fantastic characters, as always. If you know me, if you follow any of my videos, you know how important character is to me. And Christopher Golden is one of those great authors that gives us great characters, a great diversity of personalities, just really well-written characters. It's a well-written story. Uh, and it's a great plot. It, it never gets bogged down. Uh, it's not just action scene after action scene after action scene. There's a lot of personal moments, but they don't slow it down at all, which is the sign of a great writer, of course. Um, so, let's see. I, I feel like I'm forgetting something important. But if I am, you'll just have to read the book and find out what it is. Um, no, I think I covered just about everything. Uh, the great characters, I gave you the main plot points there to, to kind of draw you in, hopefully. Um, it's, it's, it's really interesting. It's one of those um, very timely kind of stories. You know, the, the idea that the United States has basically become the world police and... Uh, and, as I said, show up in places where they're not necessarily invited because the United States government thinks we need to inter intervene. Um, and I know there's a lot of, that's the kind of issue that, that people are thinking about today. Does the United States need to get involved in all of these conflicts in other parts of the world? Um, so that could lead to some exciting discussions. <laughs> um, but... Uh, it's really, really a fascinating story. Uh, highly recommend it, which brings me to my my rating here. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, I was debating what to draw for my rating. I thought about going with EMP pulses, but then that just looked like a blank sheet of paper because you can't see EMP pulses, you know. Um, I didn't want to try to draw the Tin Men themselves. Um especially since that's the only reference I have. So I went a little out. Um, these are basically robot soldiers, though they're being piloted by the consciousness of humans. So in the spirit of that, I gave Tin Men five out of five robot heads. Uh, hopefully, probably the only one that's not necessarily going to be recognized as this guy here. That's Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Uh, of course, R2D2, C3PO. And then you've got uh, up here, Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. And down here, you've got the robot from Lost in Space. Um, but anyway, that's all beside the point who they are. The important part is five out of five robot heads. Um, and I spent six dollars on a spiral bound uh, sketch pad so I could keep my ratings together hopefully nice and neat because uh, most of them are in loose things so I'm still a low budget review show six dollars does not go beyond low budget um, anyway I'm getting way off track here talking about the budget for this show uh, so there you have it five out of five for Tin Men by Christopher Golden uh, pick it up. It's it's a fantastic book. Great characters. Um, I would love to see more of these characters. It's not necessary. That's that's just the sign of a great author. The story 
is complete in and of itself. But when you have these really compelling characters, I, for one, like to see more from them. Um, I do like to see authors go off and do other things and explore other uh, avenues of their writing and not just keep coming back to the same thing over and over again. Uh, but again, as a reader, when you have these wonderful characters, I want to see them again. So I wouldn't be, it's not going to bother me if there's never another story set in this universe, but if there is, I think it would be great. Cause I'd love to see Danny and Kate and everybody else again. Um, so that's it, I guess. <laughs> um, that's Tin Men by Christopher Golden, five out of five, pick it up. As always, I will have a link for the book in the description below. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning before you say anything that's going to maybe give something away. It's just being polite, people. Uh, um, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Eric Smith. This is the Low Budget Review Show. And until next time, read more books.